Rose Marley from The Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, November 26th. So today we do still have the moon in Leo. It will be going void, of course, around midday. And while void, of course, for the majority of the afternoon into early evening, we are very unstable. We are very unsure. Not a good time to commit to anything. Not a good time to start anything new. Why? Because we are uncertain. We do not have a solid path. We do not have a solid energy. The moon will be locking into Virgo energy around... 10 12 p.m. again Atlantic Standard Time and when we move out of this very fiery very overly extra dramatic bold and courageous energy of Leo moving into the low and slow earthy energy of Virgo where we become very focused on reorganizing things restructuring things, putting everything back in its place, trying to make sense out of our thoughts, out of our feelings, getting organized mind, body, and soul, we tend to hit a brick wall. We tend to be a little bit blah. We tend to kind of feel like we were flying high and then we jumped out of a plane and our parachute didn't open and we splat down on that beautiful green earth. That being said, it's not that dramatic. I'm just trying to be a little bit dramatic to show you where the moon in Leo could be a little bit extra. And that is definitely a good analogy and a good example. We have seven different aspects taking place here today. Six of them involve the moon. The seventh aspect that does not involve the moon involves some major heavy hitting planets here that we are about to wrap up a life lesson, a chapter. I'm going to talk about that here in a second, but just know that this energy, not only because the moon is moving out of Leo, moving into Virgo, this energy with Saturn and Chiron, this is a little bit sobering. This is a little bit down to earth, a little bit heavy. It is a positive aspect, but we're not floating off into space in la-la land. We're very real. We're very present. We're very grounded. We're very much in the moment. But first, the moon, while still in Leo, bumps into Neptune, not making the greatest aspect. And let me tell you, it's happening in the wee hours of the day. So it's likely going to affect our dream state because Neptune does rule over dreams and illusions and hint, hint, nudge, nudge about to come out of retrograde here in about a week. We'll get into that in December's energy forecast. We have some very vivid dream states taking place in order for us to kind of process some of the thoughts, some of the ideas, some of the memories, some of the hints and clues coming in from the universe that we're not able to pick up on in our waking state. The moon and Leo, very heart connected, very raw, very authentic, very connected to what it is that we need to be doing in order to feel fulfilled and have meaning and purpose in our lives. We're going to get a huge visual in our dream state that will likely stay with us when we awaken. So we have to pay very close attention to the details that emerge in our dream state. Have a notepad, a pen, a paper, uh, your, your phone ready to record. Get as much dream content out as soon as you wake up as you can. We lose about 90% of our memory as far as our dream content is concerned within the first couple of minutes that we're awake. So this is going to be very revealing and I want you to pay good attention to how it is that you actually feel when you wake up because something is going to feel off. The moon goes ahead and makes a very harmonious aspect with Venus. And you may kind of remember yesterday, the moon and Venus and Mercury and Venus, they were kind of at each other. Again, we're trying to get our heart and our head on the same page. We're trying to really evaluate our own worth, what it is that, you know, who it is and what it is that is worth our time and energy, what it is that we need emotionally. We're having some power struggles in here inside of ourselves, trying to honor our heart space, but still do logical and practical things that's going to set us up for success in the future. But again, we're at a power struggle in our, you know, relationships and, you know, with the collective because honoring ourselves and doing what we feel is right for ourselves at this present moment seems to be at odds with what society wants from us. You know, these societal restrictions and conformities are really putting us at odds with what it is that we know in our heart to be true that we have to do for ourselves. So we're a little bit of back and forth, but the moon kind of harmonizing with Venus in this way, we're getting a little bit of clarity. 
we know what makes us feel good and we know what doesn't make us feel good. And we're likely figuring out what it is that does make us feel good because we're tired of kind of feeling what doesn't make us feel good. And we're reevaluating. We're doing a lot of reevaluating with what it is that makes us happy, what brings us joy. We're thinking very long term with Venus and Capricorn on the systems, routines and structures that we have to demolish right now. And again, we're in eclipse season. The universe is at the wheel, removing us of the karmic debris that we are overly attached to and not able to kind of delete ourselves. And now we're gaining a little bit of clarity on what makes us feel safe, what makes us feel secure, especially considering the long term vision and dreams that we have for ourselves and who we actually want to be a part of that. The moon kind of gets at odds, though, with Chiron. And as you know, Chiron is the wounded healer. And being at odds this way is going to bring up a lot of the not so nice thoughts and feelings. And again, that's how we learn. We only change and evolve when we are tired of suffering. And sometimes we need to be emotionally at odds with ourselves and with everyone else in our lives in order to figure out what it is that we do not want to experience anymore. And Chiron has a funny way of illuminating all of the not so nice things so that we can use that as a framework to build up the things that we do want to experience, the things that we do want to throw ourselves into, knowing that they will create a better vibe, a better frequency than some of the things that we're currently involved with. Now, the moon in Leo, this is the last aspect that the moon, the serious aspect that the moon is going to make before going void, of course, making its little journey into Virgo energy. The moon is sitting opposite to Jupiter. Jupiter, of course, is in Aquarius. Jupiter wants us to grow. He wants us to expand. He wants us to push outside of our comfort zones to see what the possibilities could be in the future. But he's also in Aquarian energy. So the Aquarian energy is very focused on the collective, where again, the moon and Leo is very, very connected on us, the individual. Now, let me just tell you, this is going to push our buttons. This is going to push our boundaries, likely from an outside person, an outside situation that is, you know, very meaningful to us, a very close connection. Somebody's going to trigger us. Somebody's going to push our emotional boundaries. And let me tell you, we are going to have an opportunity to either totally project our emotional baggage onto someone else overly stating our affection, overly kind of expressing ourselves. We are kind of pulling the energy from the possibilities of the future into the present moment without any evidence in the present moment that that possibility in the future is even tangible. And we are overly eager to attach and to commit to any kind of crumb of stability, of hope, and that would be the wrong thing to do, my friends. We do not want to commit to anything right now, especially if we don't have evidence in our present moment that our futuristic vision, our futuristic dream is even possible. We need building blocks. We need tangible, realistic, practical, logical bits of evidence in our here and now to actually support that our dream, our vision of the future is something that could realistically happen. But with this energy... We tend to just be off in la la land and create a vision and a dream that is just so freaking unrealistic. We don't have a tangible bit of evidence in the here and now to even prove that that is something that could even be manifested or come to life. And again, that's why I just kind of advise you don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't set yourself up for failure and disappointment. Don't be so extra thinking about the possibilities, the bright lights of the future that you forget that the foundation of that in the future needs to be built in the here and now. And you can't build an imaginary foundation and expect an imaginary vision and dream to come true. There has to be realistic building blocks in the here and now to support the dream and vision that you're conjuring up in your mind space. So this is going to be very overwhelming. Again, we talked about, you know, being extra, being overwhelmed, overstating, over expressing, over committing. We want to avoid that like the plague. The moon goes ahead and bumps into Pluto. This isn't the most positive aspect, but it does give us a little bit of opportunity to get a grip, to get a grip. I'm going to say it again. We got to get a grip 
over our emotions, over our thoughts, over our visualizations. Again, many of us are so upset with the here and now that we have disassociated and checked out 100% completely and decided to spend all of our time pouring energy and attention into a focus into the futuristic possibilities of what we would love to be living and totally abandon the action needed to ground in and root in the here and now to do the emotional work right now to set us up for that future in which this la la land has us 100% convinced that we can have without doing any work. That's a delusion. We are setting ourselves up for failure doing stuff like that. So this little, you know, Plutonian energy wants us to boss up, wants us to take control, wants us to power up, wants us, wants us to get a grip, like I said, emotionally, and be able to actually say, hmm, okay, 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 yeah, I am off in la la land, yeah, I've been a little bit extra, yeah, I gotta come back down to earth, yep, here's the transformation, watch me go. So the aspect that I talked about that didn't have anything to do with the moon, this is between Saturn and Chiron. So Saturn, again, the Lord of Karma, very focused on, you know, roles and responsibilities. He's in Aquarius. So we're definitely thinking about, you know, the foundations, the systems, the routines that are collapsing and crumbling. Thank you for Saturn being in Capricorn for the last couple of years to create the dismantling and total destruction of all of these systems and government and politics and banking and healthcare, all the systems that are controlled by the one percent that aren't even created and supporting humanity at this point they're crumbling right that started in 2018 2019 that's why the great awakening is happening now saturn's in aquarius saying okay people futuristically we have to think about what we have to you know put in place of these systems and structures that are are, are just you know dissolving in front of our eyes what can we replace them with that's going to effectively support us long term in supporting humanity. And, you know, Saturn in Aquarius has been giving us all kinds of life lessons, bossing us up, really just putting it to us where the tough love life lessons need to be drilled in us in order for us to change and transform. Well, Saturn is bumping into Chiron. This is the third time that this has happened this year. The first one was back in February. Then we had one in June. So rewind to those two different mind frames because it's going to be a significant wrap up of a life lesson here. But here's the thing. This is a sextile. This is a great energy because this is kind of like us reminding ourselves who it is that we are, why it is that we're here, all the times, especially over the last month of being in the shadow season of Scorpio, breaking us down, breaking us down, not feeling good enough, not feeling competent, blah, blah, blah. This aspect validates for us that guess what? We're getting real. We have been humbled. We are now seeing where our strengths are. We are now understanding our unique individual qualities and how it is that we can bring that forth in our personal relationships, in our community, in the greater grander collective to help the vibration and frequency of the collective to shift into new earth. It's happening. New earth is already being built, been being built. Everybody's sitting around for this, you know, oh, when is new earth coming? It is happening each and every single day, people. So back in February, that was the first aspect. No doubt. On the greater, grander scale of the collective, we had major developments take place. Then in June, we hit a peak point of this particular lesson. Another huge revealing turning point in the collective. And then now we are wrapping up this particular life lesson. And this is going to make us feel a little bit more confident, a little bit more secure. We're definitely grounded. We're definitely a little bit more realistic. We're understanding where the healing is taking place. We're understanding why the life lessons had to happen. We're understanding where it is that we've been asked to boss up. We're understanding where new meaning and purpose is unfolding. We are understanding why we've had to go through all of these pain and suffering individually in order to address our individual wounds to understand that this was the unconscious collective again we're moving out of Pisces season into the conscious collective which is the age of Aquarius you know Pisces the age of Pisces 2,000 years 
of just being asleep at the wheel. This is why we're going through the great awakening because we're on the cusp of moving in to the new age of Aquarius. And that is when an awakening happens. It is when the unconscious becomes conscious. So Saturn sextiling Chiron is a huge aha moment, a huge turning point, a huge celebration point where we're bossing up and we're feeling okay about it. We've read the roles and responsibilities that we came into this soul contract to fulfill. We've been whining and complaining about it and poor me and victim mentality and I can never do it. And every single day I'm just getting worse and worse. No, this energy is going to change the game just before, just before wrapping up November and entering into December. And you best believe that December is wrapping up a beautiful chapter of what 2021 was all about. So the last aspect that we have here today is the moon now in Virgo energy. Let me remind you, we are heading to the last quarter moon in Virgo tomorrow. So we do have to expect that there is going to be a building of energies. Here's the thing. The moon in Virgo making a beautiful, harmonious aspect with Pluto, the great transformer. Okay, we are getting organized we are putting our emotions in a row. We are putting our thoughts in a row. We got to get the heart and the head online before we can make the changes in our physical realms. We are going to be, I'm going to say, just OCD all day trying to get our environments in order. We have the Plutonian energy saying, boss up, take control, time to power up. Can't sit around in victimhood, letting your fears and your doubts and insecurities just totally wreck your mental game and therefore totally wrecking your emotions and therefore totally wrecking your physical experience. Okay, we've been through the ringer. It's time to dry out, right? We just got out of Scorpio season. We were soaked. We were saturated with water. Time to dry up. We've been in Sag season for just a short amount of time. Didn't have a whole lot of heat helping to dry us up because we moved right into Sag season with the moon and cancer, bringing up all the feels and attachments to the emotional past of healing our generational trauma and dealing with the family dynamics. Now we got to get ourselves in order and we are going to ride this Plutonian energy. Yes, it's dark, but we're taking that darkness. We're using it as motivation and inspiration in order to power up, boss up, be the powerhouse individual people that we were scripted to be and we're about to move forward in a big bold grandest type of way 